patient to get diagnosed, what are the essential tests? So we're talking about metastatic breast cancer here. Um, and about in the US, maybe up to 10% or slightly less of breast cancer is technically stage four or metastatic at diagnosis. That means at the time we first found it in the breast, it had already spread beyond. So an important thing that we'll do with a newly diagnosed breast cancer is we will, especially if there are lots of lymph nodes involved or if the patient has symptoms that might you know, say that maybe there's something in the bone or the liver or the lung, we will do staging. So we'll use scans, maybe a CAT scan, maybe a bone scan, maybe a PET scan. And we will look at, as to whether the disease has gone beyond the breast and the lymph nodes, and if so, where. Um, and, and so maybe eight to 10% of breast cancer diagnosed in the US already has some evidence that it has spread beyond the breast. But the most common way that metastatic breast cancer happens is that a patient was diagnosed possibly years and years ago, treated in the early stage setting, and now it comes back. And that's the most common presentation for metastatic breast cancer. And sometimes that can be due to symptoms. As I said, if it comes back in the bone, maybe that's bone pain. If it's in the lung, it's a cough. You know, we, there are symptoms. Um, sometimes it's because we've done a blood test or something and we find some changes there. And so when a breast cancer has recurred, it's really important to document that it's really breast cancer coming back, first of all. And so if we can, we generally want a biopsy. And we want to stick a needle in it if it's safe to do and look and verify that it looks like breast cancer. And also it's really important that we repeat all those receptors that we talked about from the beginning because it can change. So a cancer up front 10 years ago could have been positive for estrogen receptor, but the only cells that survived mutated, changed, were estrogen receptor negative. And so what comes back could be different. So it's really critical to get that biopsy, repeat the estrogen progesterone receptor, the HER2. And also in an ideal world, now that it's 2020 and we're moving more toward genomics, to do a full genomic profile and look for other changes, mutations that could drive our therapeutic options. So Staging, knowing where the cancer is, getting a good baseline uh, by understanding where it is, how big it is, so that we can follow it and hopefully see that it's responding to treatment. And then repeating all of the biology components so that we know what the best options are for treatment are really critical. Right. How can patients advocate for a precise breast cancer diagnosis and, and why is that important? Well, all of those things I just mentioned are key. Knowing exactly where it is um, so that we can monitor it. Um, for example, if the cancer has come back in the bones, we would add a bone modifying agent, we call it, a drug like zoledronic acid or denosumab, which is uh, Zometa or Exgeva, because that can suppress um, bone destruction from the cancer. But if it's not in the bone, we wouldn't add that. Um, and, and we want to have a good look everywhere so that we can see if it's responding because sometimes the tumor can respond differently in one area than another. And also, I think it's really important to know what your treatment options are by doing that biopsy, getting a full panel, looking at the hundreds potentially of genes that could be mutated or deleted or amplified so that we know what our treatment options are. And we're not going to use all that treatment options up front. So it's helpful for knowing, okay, if this treatment doesn't work or if it's too toxic for me, what's my second line option or my third line option? So um, making sure that there's good, what we call staging up front, so we know where the cancer is, and then making sure that we've looked at it as best we can in 2020 uh, with all the genomics, that would give us the best chance of 
being tailored, being individualized to the tumor. Um, and sometimes if we can't biopsy it, like with a needle that would go into a liver um, spot, then increasingly we're looking at what we call liquid biopsies. And that can be drawing the blood and seeing if we can find parts of the tumor, whether it be the DNA or the RNA um, that's floating around in the blood. And sometimes we can get that information out of the blood as well. Mm -hmm.